Empirical provide compelling, interactive learning across a range of delivery options. Live on site, live online or online anytime, we have a training course that is ideal for you. For a no-obligations chat about your training requirements, contact us at empirical.com. As a mobile service provider wishing to also support Wi-Fi calling, they need to make some changes to the basic architecture to enable us to carry these calls across Wi-Fi, but also to support mobility to enable a call to be handed over to an LTE network as we leave Wi-Fi radio coverage. Therefore, in this video, we're going to take a look at some of the basics of our voice over LTE and voice over Wi-Fi to see the commonality. We're then going to move on and take a look at some of the basic deployment scenarios before then looking at the different network architectures which can be supported. Finally, we'll have a look at the key network elements and see the functions that they carry out. So to begin with then, let's just take a look at Wi-Fi calling and compare it to VoLTE, Voice over LTE, the means by which we can carry voice across our 4G networks. Well, as we can see here, VoLTE is simply a voice over IP connection. Therefore, carrying our voice traffic from the PDN gateway down to the serving gateway across our radio network and down to the phone. In other words, the voice is simply IP traffic being carried across the system. However, once we wish to support Wi-Fi calling, we need to add some additional network elements. Here we can see we have our access point, our Wi-Fi radio, which connects back into our mobile service providers network via an EPDG, an Evolved Packet Data Gateway. Therefore, when the mobile moves over onto Wi-Fi, our voice over Wi-Fi now will simply pass across these network elements. Again, carried across our Wi-Fi network, up through our Evolved Packet Data Gateway, and out onto the same PDN Gateway. Now, this is particularly important because our PDN Gateway acts as our anchor point. And therefore, as the mobile moves between Wi-Fi and LTE, our traffic will still remain anchored through the same PDN gateway. In other words, the mobile can maintain an IP address, which is stored at the PDN gateway, and therefore, as far as our external servers, uh, there is no change as the mobile switches between the different access networks. Now, as far as the 3GPP, the third generation partnership project is concerned, this is the body responsible for defining the specifications about how this should work, they don't strictly refer to it as Wi-Fi calling. They refer to this whole process as non-3GPP access. In other words, using access networks which are not under its control. And they simply give examples of these access networks in terms of WLAN or Wi-Fi, CDMA 2000 and WiMAX. Now, clearly, in this series of videos, we're going to be focusing on Wi-Fi as the non-3GPP access-based system. So, let's take a look at some of the different deployment scenarios. Well, there are different particular architectures which we can support for Wi-Fi calling. But for an untrusted non-3GPP access-based model, we would expect to be able to use Wi-Fi calling in a whole host of different environments be that coffee shops and hotels, be that in the office or other workspace environments, or sitting at home using the Wi-Fi associated with our broadband connectivity. For service providers, however, Wi-Fi could also be used to improve the coverage area, either to increase the coverage area over and above that currently um, supported via LTE, or to reach areas where perhaps the LTE radio uh, is incapable of doing so. On this diagram here, we can see how potential Wi-Fi can be used to improve indoor coverage. So far, we can see then the coverage area of our LTE network, but for certain subscribers operating within the office environment, uh, their Wi-Fi or voice over LTE calls would drop as they moved, say, within the center of the office. However, with Wi-Fi calling or voice over Wi-Fi, we now have the ability to utilize the Wi-Fi within the office environment to also carry our voice. And with the support for mobility, we can then hand the calls between LTE and Wi-Fi without dropping that connection. 
other potential deployment scenarios uh, could enable us to support roaming. In other words, to provide connectivity to our subscribers as they leave and move on to foreign networks. Here we can see our mobile would connect up to a Wi-Fi network in, let's say, the hotel or in a coffee shop. And through that Wi-Fi connection, across the internet, they would establish a secure connection using a process termed IPsec, connecting back into our EPDG, our Evolved Packet Data Gateway. Therefore, provided they didn't wish to remain connected as they leave the Wi-Fi environment, they would now, to all intents and purposes, be making local calls, but from a foreign country. The next thing to discuss are the different architectural models which can support our Wi-Fi calling or Wi-Fi offload. Now, the 3GPP defined two different processes of doing this. The first of these we're going to entitle Trusted Non-3GPP Access. Here we can see that the mobile connected through the access point using Wi-Fi can connect directly to the PDN gateway via the S2A interface or more commonly will pass through a TWAG, a Trusted Wireless Access Gateway. In this configuration, however, as we would name would suggest, the Wi-Fi network is trusted. We assume there is an association between the wireless internet service provider supporting the Wi-Fi network and our mobile service provider providing our PDN gateway, etc. In other words, during the process of connecting to Wi-Fi, we may authenticate the subscriber using cellular credentials from uh, a home subscriber server, for example. This type of configuration we typically see associated with Wi-Fi offload, where a particular mobile service provider has also invested with Wi-Fi and rolled out a corresponding Wi-Fi network, but sharing the same security information, hence the term trusted. The second method, and possibly the more common, is actually the untrusted 3GPP access model. Here we assume that there is no relationship or association between our Wi-Fi service provider and the mobile service provider. As such, it's necessary to carry out additional security procedures before permitting the mobile to actually register and start making calls. This is achieved by setting up an IPsec tunnel between the mobile and the EPDG, our Evolved Packet Data Gateway. And in the process of setting up this IPsec tunnel, which supports encryption and integrity protection, we would also carry out subscriber authentication using a process termed EEP AKA. This is more common for Wi-Fi call-in because it allows our subscribers to make calls whilst they are residing in coffee shops, hotels or sitting at home. So then, let's take a look at the key network elements that we're going to find here, in particular, with our untrusted non-3GPP-based access. The first of these, then, will be our mobile phone and our access point. Well, clearly, this is the Wi-Fi part of the connection, and as such, needs to adhere to the Wi-Fi specifications, the IEEE 802.11 standards. In addition to that, because we need to use the services of an IMS, an IP multimedia subsystem, for the whole call control and management of our Wi-Fi call, then our mobile phone will also require a SIP client. This is the same as if it's that needed to support a voice over LTE connection. Our EPDG, our Evolved Packet Data Gateway, provides our termination point for our IPsec tunnel. It's also responsible for mapping traffic coming up from the mobile across the IPsec tunnel onto either a GTP or a proxy mobile IP connection between it and the PDN gateway, and the corresponding mapping to ensure that the right traffic is sent down the associated connection. And finally, we have the PDN gateway, which is the common node, regardless of whether we are uh, having connectivity across the LTE network or across the Wi-Fi network. It acts as our anchor point for our IP connectivity, and in so doing, carries out packet filtering, screening, etc., etc. So then, so far we've seen the network architecture, which will allow us to carry our IP traffic regardless of whether it's coming across a Wi-Fi access network or potentially across an LTE access network. Because we remain anchored at the PDN gateway and the device will keep the same IP address as it transits between the two radio systems. 
However, to support voice over Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi calling, we also need the services of an IMS, an IP multimedia subsystem, and in addition to that, policy and charging control. But we require these services for voice over LTE as much as we do for voice over Wi-Fi. So for service providers which are already rolling out a Vaulty solution, the next step then to roll out voice over Wi-Fi is only a small addition. So then, regardless of whether connectivity is coming across our Wi-Fi network or across our LTE network, we require the services of our IMS, the IP Multimedia Subsystem, which as far as we're concerned is supporting call control. In essence, the device will register with a device within the IMS and that particular device, the call session control function, will be responsible for setting up and clearing down the calls. Likewise, we also need policy and charging control, in this case our policy charging rules function, which is responsible for interworking with the IMS as well as our PDN gateways to trigger the setting up of the associated bearers to carry the voice information ensuring the correct quality of service is maintained end-to-end -end across the network. Therefore, for our Wi-Fi calling, it's really a combination of pulling these various network elements together. Again, regardless of what the access network is, be that LTE or Wi-Fi, we use the same services of IMS and PCC. So then, in summary, what have we seen in this video? Well, we've seen then that voice over LTE and voice over Wi-Fi are fundamentally very similar, with the exception of the obvious different access networks which are going to be used. We've seen the different deployment scenarios where Wi-Fi can be used to improve the coverage areas or potential capacity for our service providers. It could also be used in the case of roaming to enable subscribers to make local calls whilst visiting uh, networks in foreign countries. We've seen the different architectural configurations supported by the 3GPP. Our trusted non-3GPP uh, access typically used for Wi-Fi offload and the more common untrusted non-3GPP access which we'll see for Wi-Fi calling. And finally, we saw the different network elements that were used uh, during the establishment and maintenance of our Wi-Fi calls. The mobiles, the access points, our evolved packet data gateways and the PDN gateways, as well as our IMS and our PCC functionality. Need to know more? Why not visit our store where you can choose from over 200 hours of video-based training? Alternatively, you can contact us to discuss any specific training requirements you may have.